Chapter 3 Traitors to Men and God I testify again, as the Lord lives, God never will acknowledge any traitors or apostates. TPJS, page 375 If thou seek him he will be found of thee, but if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. I Kron, 28-9 there is no hurt, no grief, nor any suffering quite as painful as that which can be caused by someone you trust, love or call a friend. It takes someone from within your own ranks, a traitor, to cause the greatest damage and deepest sorrow, like the collapse of the Holy Roman Empire that fell because of the weakness of its own people, or, similarly the Great Wall of China, that had been breached three times not by the power of the enemy but, because the gatekeepers had been bribed. The great cause of freedom in America was nearly lost when General Benedict Arnold collaborated with the enemy. Armies, nations and even the Gospel of Christ have had their deepest wounds from those within their own ranks that prove themselves to be traitors. The devil knows that he can gain his most devastating victories by working from within rather than by force from without. From the time of Cain to the present, there is a path of blood, destruction and apostasy created by men, like Judas, who love darkness more than light, because they turn traitor to the cause they enlisted to serve. There is a reason why men fall from the high or holy callings they have attained. Brigham Young explains why some men become traitors when he said, We have the best and the worst. Why the worst? Because the devil prompts men and women of the meanest and lowest grade to embrace the gospel and get a foothold in the kingdom of God to destroy it. And then he added, If you want to see the principle of devilism to perfection, Hun among those who have once enjoyed the faith of the Holy Gospel, and then forsaken their religion. JD 7 145 The Gospel writers and the Apostles usually referred to Judas Iscariot in the following terms. Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. Luke 6 16 the appellation was earned and well attached to Judas, for it was his most famous act. Betrayal or traitorous acts are all solemn and saddening. Those who forsake or turn against their family leave broken hearts. Those who betray the confidence of an organization, prove to be unworthy of trust by any other company, and can be punished by the law. And he that betrays or acts as traitor to his country is often worthy of death. But the sin of betrayal to God is more serious, more terrible and worse in the final judgment than man has conceived of. The prophet Joseph Smith gave this timely warning. O ye twelve, and all saints, profit by this important key that in all your trials, troubles, temptations, afflictions, bonds, imprisonments and death, see to it, that you do not betray heaven, that you do not betray Jesus Christ, that you do not betray the brethren, that you do not betray the revelations of God, whether in the Bible, Book of Mormon, or Doctrine and Covenants, or any other that ever was or ever will be given and revealed unto man in this world or that which is to come. Yea, in all your kicking and flounderings, see to it that you do not this thing, lest innocent blood be found upon your skirts, and you go down to hell. All other sins are not to be compared to sinning against the Holy Ghost, and proving a traitor to the brethren. TPJS, page 156. So great are the spiritual sins of traitors that God will never recognize them in places of trust again. The majority of most sins are committed through personal weakness, but the sins of a betrayer or traitor are willful and intentionally done to cause trouble to those they once called friends. Joseph Smith portrayed his feelings about such characters in the following language. They the world make a tool of these fellows the dissenters, and by them try to do all the injury they can, and after that they hate them worse than they do us, because they find them to be base traitors and sycophants. Such characters God hates, we cannot love them, the world hates them, and we sometimes think that the devil ought to be ashamed of them. TPJS, page 126. It is a matter of record that when communists take over a country, the first people executed are those who serve the communists by the betrayal of their own country. The communists have learned that once a person becomes a traitor, they can never again be trusted. If they betray once, they can easily betray again. Once a man becomes a traitor, he is not fit to be placed into positions of trust again. This has been demonstrated throughout the pages of history by men in both political and religious offices. The prophet Jeremiah said, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Jer. 17.5 And Jesus explained, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none. He saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out, and when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in, and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. 
Luke 11 24-26, traders demonstrate that they have lost, or never had, any true values or standards of character. Once a man is proved to be a traitor, he is recognized as not possessing the metal or the strength of soul, to stand temptation, trials or test. Most nations do not allow any further trust to a man who has been guilty of being a traitor. This is also true in religious offices. You know the law of nations is that when a man becomes a traitor to the law of the land, all he has is confiscated, and he is punished accordingly, and so it is in the church and kingdom of God. Brigham Young, J.D. 8213 most nations of the world will execute anyone guilty of being a traitor to their country. Such a traitor is guilty of betraying his own people and friends. However, a man who proves to be a traitor to his religion is a betrayer to his God, and the crime is against his own soul. It is one of the worst forms of sin, and will require a punishment that extends beyond the span of mortality. Judas would fall into that bottomless pit from which no mortal hand could redeem him.